Hello, my name is Travis Monk. This is one part of a series of videos on chemistry and biochemistry overviewing acids, bases, and the pH scale, focusing on mathematic calculations of these values. The graphic on this slide shows the typical pH range, examples of different substances at each pH level, and the environmental impact of pH on aquatic organisms. Knowing the pH of a solution is also important for lab safety. Although this is found in another video, I'll provide you with a very brief overview of acids, bases, and the pH scale. There are lots of different ways that you can define a substance as an acid or base, but one way of doing so is looking at the concentration of two different types of ions, hydronium ions and hydroxide ions. Solutions that have more hydronium than hydroxide ions are acidic, and solutions that have more hydroxide than hydronium ions are basic. Solutions that have an equal number are neutral, and the picture to the right shows what those ions look like. The pH scale is a logarithmic scale, and what that means is that a pH change of 1 results in a tenfold change in the number of hydro hydronium or hydroxide ions. This is shown by the exponents in the concentration of the ions that are found in the last two columns of the graphic to the right. This scale is used because of the drastic differences in the concentration of these ions and other examples of logarithmic scales would be the Richter scale for earthquakes and the decibel scale for sound. In some problems involving acids and bases, you'll be given the concentration of one type of ion, either hydronium or hydroxide, and you'll be asked to solve for the other. This is quite easy to do because there's what's called an equilibrium or dissociation constant of these ions that is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. To oversimplify things, and the picture below helps illustrate this, water molecules are usually content with one oxygen and two hydrogen atoms. But sometimes what happens is that one water molecule gives a hydrogen atom up to another water molecule, forming a hydronium and hydroxide ion. As the arrows suggest in the picture, this is not too common. Only about 1 in 100 trillion molecules are hydronium or hydroxide ions as opposed to the typical form of water a value that's represented mathematically as 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. Acids are substances that usually increase the number of hydronium ions in a solution, and bases are substances that usually increase the number of hydroxide ions in a solution. So by looking at the relative numbers of those two ions, you can figure out how acidic or how basic something is. When you multiply the number of hydronium and hydroxide ions together, you should always come up with the same value, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. When trying to solve for the number of hydronium, or H3O plus ions, as shown on the top, or hydroxide ions, OH minus, as shown on the bottom, what you can do is rearrange the formula from the previous slide. This can make your calculations a little bit simpler to do. Now that you have some equations and a little background of hydronium and hydroxide ions, we can try some practice problems. The three different equations that we discussed previously are provided on the left-hand side of this slide. On the right, you're given the concentration of hydroxide ions in a solution as 2.5 times 10 to the negative ninth. What you're supposed to do for this problem, what you're supposed to solve for, is the concentration of hydronium ions that you would expect to find in this solution. The second equation would be the easiest to use in this circumstance. Since you will always be working with the same equilibrium constant, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14, and you know the concentration of hydroxide, or OH, ions, you can divide the two to solve for the concentration of hydronium, or H3O plus, ions. When you plug the concentration of hydroxide ions into this equation, the only problem involves proper calculator use and double-checking your answer. One tip when using a calculator is to make sure that you use brackets around your numerator and denominator so that the order of operation that the calculator uses are what they should be. Many students come up with ridiculous answers because they fail to do so. When you plug the data into the calculator, you should find an answer to be 4.0 times 10 to the negative 6th power. There are a few things that you can do uh, to look at your answer to make sure that it's right. You shouldn't have to do them in a calculator, just run them through your head. First, multiply your two values without exponents times each other. In this case, multiply 2.5 times 4, and if you don't come up with 10 or something really, really close to 10, uh, you did something wrong. Second, add up your exponents forgetting that the minus sign is there. If you don't end up with a 15, or in one case a 14, something went wrong. In this case, 9 plus 6 is 15, so things again look pretty good. When you think of acids and bases, you probably think pH and the pH scale, not hydronium and hydroxide ions. 
pH is actually derived from the concentration of hydronium ions in a mathematic formula. So it's very easy to switch back and forth between the two values. Once you have the concentration of hydronium ions, all you need to do is take the negative log of that value using your calculator. If you were given the concentration of hydronium ions as 2.5 times 10 to the negative fifth in a solution, you could quite easily calculate that solution's pH. By taking the negative log of the concentration of hydronium ions and plugging the value into your calculator, you would arrive at a pH of 4.60. Part of the battle of arriving at your correct answer is, again, plugging these values properly into your calculator. The pH scale ranges from 0 to 14, typically. So if you come up with a number that's not between 0 and 14, you should try again. Like before, there's a pretty easy way to double-check your answer without using a calculator. Your pH value should be one less than the exponent for your hydronium ion concentration, as highlighted here. The pH is 4.6 and the exponent is 5. To calculate the pH of a solution where you know the concentration of hydroxide ions, all you need to do is tie the two things that we did on the previous problems together. First, you need to calculate the concentration of hydronium ions. To do so, you merely take the equilibrium constant, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th, divided by the concentration of hydroxide ions. The formula to calculate this is highlighted here. You would then plug those numbers into the equation and solve using a calculator. What you should find in this example is that the hydronium ion concentration is 3.23 times 10 to the negative sixth power. If you're uncertain about your answer, I would double check it using the techniques that I described in the previous slides. Now that you know the concentration of hydronium ions, just like before, you can use the negative log of that number to calculate the pH of your given solution. Plug what you find below in the box here into a calculator, and you should be set. You should come up with a pH of 5.49. Again, double check using those techniques I described in earlier slides if you have any doubts. That is the end of this video summarizing how to calculate the pH as well as hydronium and hydroxide ion concentrations in a solution. If you're interested in learning about other chemistry or biochemistry concepts as they relate to biology, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.